There is no denying it. There is plenty to dislike about Tinder and Hinge and Bumble and all other online dating apps. By far, one of the most common complaints that I hear from guys is when they say that, you know, to get any results at all on Tinder, you have to be in the top 20%. And if you're not, well, then you're not going to get any women looking at you at all. And it's unfair. Well, today I want to explain two things. One, I want to explain why the notion that you should be annoyed and angry and that it's super unfair that you have to be in the top 20% to be successful with women, why that's outrageous <laughs> to believe that. And in fact, if you do believe that, it's almost going to ensure this mindset is going to make sure that you never have success in any part of your life. And the second thing I'm going to explain is actually I hope to inspire you to understand that you don't have to be the most attractive guy. That in fact almost any guy is average or above average can actually do really well on Tinder if you know how to put that work in. So I'm going to explain both of these in this video. Keep watching to find out more. When I was a teenager growing up, I was the poor kid at a rich kid's school. My dad and mom sacrificed everything, and I mean everything in their lives, to be able to send me to a school where I would have the opportunity to hobnob. That sounds kind of gay. But where I'd have an opportunity to mingle with guy, other guys from, from successful backgrounds. They were hoping that doing that would give me a good step up, an opportunity in life. Which, in retrospect, makes me feel a little bit guilty for sneaking out of school so often to smoke, getting high and drunk on the weekends. Sorry, Mum and Dad. But anyway, I was going to these schools, to this school, and especially when I went to sporting events and things like this outside of school, I would see all my friends rolling up with their parents driving in in brand new Mercedes, brand new um, BMWs, Porsches, this kind of thing. And here I would be coming up in my Mum and Dad's Ford. So very early on, I created in my head this idea that what I really wanted to do is I, I, would, I would have the first taste of success if I could afford to buy myself a brand new Mercedes. Now, a brand new Mercedes costs about $70,000, give or take, here in Australia. So what kind of income range do you think I'd need to be to comfortably be able to afford to buy myself a Mercedes? Well, as it turns out, I need to be above the top 10% making over 150,000 a year because only the top 10%, because that's where you can reasonably afford to buy a Mercedes, right? About half of your yearly income, any less than that, and you're kind of really sacrificing all other things and being a bit irresponsible buying an expensive car. So to be in the top 10% is where I needed to be to get that Mercedes. I did get there, spoiler alert. As I approached the end of high school, I started to realize I needed to get into a good university degree to make the kind of money that I wanted to make. The degree I wanted to do was engineering and business, a, a double degree. And there was no way that my parents could afford to pay my way through university. So what I had to do here in Australia is I have to get good enough grades to inspire the government to loan me the money to go to uni. Now, do you know what grade I needed to get to have the government loan me the money to get into my degree? 95.2 was what was required in my year to get into engineering uh, business double degree. That means that I had to be in the top 4.8%. Spoiler alert, I did just sneak in by 0.2% and get into my degree. I did, however, drop out of my degree two years in uh, due to I started to get really bad depression and anxiety and I dropped out. But I also realized I didn't really love what I was doing. The degree wasn't for me. So I floundered around for a while, trying to find my feet, trying to overcome my depression and my anxiety. When I was floundering, struggling at university at the same time with my depression and anxiety, I started to do a lot of exercise. And I decided that what I wanted to do was see how good a shape, a physical shape I could get into, right? I, want, I really had this picture in my mind. I wanted to have that really amazing, uh, like well-built six-pack body. Um, and uh, let me ask you, what percentage of guys end up having a six-pack? Less than 10%, right? That, that's a fairly safe bet. And I start to fall in love with a, a form of self-development called men's work, right? Which is masculine self-development, coming and getting in touch with your masculine, dark masculine, and your shadow self, and all this stuff, and how you relate to women and, and men. It wasn't about dating yet. 
But what I realized was that I had a real passion for helping men build their self-esteem, especially around dating and relationships and women. So I decided that I want to start a dating coaching company, School of Attraction. And so let me ask you, first of all, how many businesses on average do you think actually end up earning their owners a lot of money? <laughs> okay, not many, right? How many dating coaches do you think pop up all over the place, all over the time? Right? How many of those go on to be successful? If I wanted to be really successful starting a dating coaching company, right? If I want to become one of the most successful in, say, the whole of Australia, how do you think I'd have to perform? I'd probably have to be in the top 10%, if not more, right? Can you see a common figure coming up? To be successful in anything, anything that I really wanted to kill it at in my life, I've had to work to become the top 10%, easily, comfortably in the top 10%. But you know, all of these mini stories of success that I'm sharing with you right now, they never show the sacrifice and the heartache and the failure and the blood and the sweat and the tears, right? To get into really good physical shape. You better believe that I had to go to the gym six days a week. You better believe that I had to start stop eating all the things I wanted to eat to have fun. You better believe I had to stop drinking. You better believe that I had to start having early nights and stop going out and partying so much just to get into shape, right? If, if you think that I got into the top 5% to get into my university degree through no sacrifice, right? I had to pretty much give up my entire last year of school studying nonstop to get the grades Australia-wide to get the grades that I needed to get to get into that degree. If you think for a second that I built a company that is one of the most successful of its kind in Australia without sacrifice, guys, when I first started School of Attraction, I worked 70 hours a week for almost two years straight, okay? I, that means I had no friends. I lost contact with all my friends. That means I had no social life at all. That means I had nothing, nothing in my life outside of work and exercise. That was it. I gave up those years of my life to be successful. Now, let's talk about dating for a second. Let's talk about online dating. Let's talk about Tinder. I've talked about the mathematics of Tinder in the past. Okay, And if you'd like to learn the details of that, you can go ahead and check a video I'll throw up, up here. But basically, it works like this. There are two types of dating, right, that, 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 that people can do. One is casual dating and one is romantic dating. Now, if you're out there to do casual dating, you're going to need to be in the top 20%, not even 10%, but you've got to be in the top 20% to get any results. In other words, if you want any kind of casual results with women, you need to be competitive. And to be competitive will take work. And the reason why, by the way, you have to be in that top 20% is, is pure mathematics. Forget anything else. Forget uh, hypergamy that you may have heard about, forget like uh, any kind of pseudoscientific behavioral analysis of women. Think about it in these terms. The average man, if he could, would love to sleep with yeah, three new women a week. That'd be fantastic, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? Right. The average woman, however, doesn't want to sleep with three men a week. The average woman would be happy to sleep with one new guy a month. Right? I know that some women are more promiscuous than others, but let's take an average of all women, let's say between 20 and 40 right? The average is going to be somewhere about one a month in an ideal. And even then, many women will want less and some will want more. But that's kind of where the average lies. Now, when you've got this kind of disparity, what that ends up doing is the guys who can get lots of women end up with sleeping with a much, much larger range of women because women aren't having as much promiscuous sex as guys will if given the opportunity. So, you know, the average, the, it's only the guys at the top who get lots of success, while the guys at the bottom pretty much get nothing. And that's why you get the disparity. You don't need anything else, any other complex um, behavioral thing going on. You just need to understand that men are being more promiscuous than women, so it's only the guys at the top who get to do all the pr promiscuity. And mathematically, there's not enough women to go around. But when we talk about romantic success or romantic dating, it's very different. And if you just want proof of the fact that you don't need to be in the top 10, 20% to get success in the romantic world, hop on down to your local shopping center, right? Go to, go to, go to Coles if you live in Australia. <laughs> you know, go to, uh, go to Walmart if you live in the United States. Go to Aldi if you live in Europe. Uh, and just look at the couples you see around the place. You're going to see a hell of a lot of guys who are not top 10, 20% 
with wives next to them, with kids along with them, right? These are, are men who are who are chubby or short or balding or skinny or, you know, whatever defect, not over necessarily like prime dating material, right? And they've still managed to find a partner and have a family and get the romantic stuff going on. You don't need to be in that top percentile for matchmaking because that's a one-to-one -one matching, right? Because 90% of couples just date the one person romantically. Cheating and all that other stuff aside, right? So, so you get a much fairer result there. And the difficulty is when it comes to online dating, guys confuse uh, casual dating, like you tend to get on apps like Tinder and Bumble and Hinge, they confuse that with romantic dating. So they think that it should be one-to-one -one and totally fair, but it's not, and it shouldn't be. So do you have to like go through blood, sweat and tears to get results on Tinder? Yes, but nothing near the kind of blood, sweat and tears you'll need to go through to get success in any other part of your life. You know, to, 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 I've often said that if you're an average to above average guy, you can do well on Tinder. You don't have to be like super, super hot, super attractive, tall, dark and handsome. You don't need to look like that. And in fact, I've done videos where I've taken guys who aren't like, like old supermodels and help them build a profile that gets results and still does. You want to see that video, I'll link to it up here, but I've done it before. It's not necessary. Now, I know some guys are just born super attractive and tall and dark and handsome and all these great stuff and cool, good for them. But most people will have to work for the results. And you will have to work for results on Tinder or Bumble or Hinge. But the truth is you won't need to work as hard as you will in any other part of your life. So it's fair. If you look at Tinder and Bumble and you think, I'd have to put in work to get the results and I don't think it's worthwhile just to get women in my life, just to, to have casual fun, that's fine. I respect that decision. I, you don't have to do that. It's, there's other things in life to focus on. But I know for many men, you do want to have that success. And, and no one's really told you, you're going to have to put in the hard work. You're going to have to fail a bit. And you're going to have to get frustrated along the way. That's how it's going to work. But let me tell you this. Nothing in life that you want to have is going, is going to be easy. And, and getting success on Tinder is way easier than starting a successful business. It's way easier than becoming upper management. You know, it's way easier than, than, than getting into a great university. Like all those things, it, almost anything you want to have success in is going to take the work. And, and if you're going to, if you're going to balk at, at putting in work on Tinder, I got, I got really horrible news for what the rest of your life is going to look like. So yeah, it's okay to deprioritize Tinder if it's not important for you. But if women are important, put in the work, <laughs> right? Don't step back, right? Realize that's just how life is, that you need to be high performance to get high results. Now, at this point, I want to let you guys know, this is what I do for a living. I help Guys get really incredible results on Tinder, Bumble Hinge, on, 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 on matchmaking sites, on, on any kind of online dating. I show guys how to get those results. Now, right now, you can actually get my entire course for free. And it works like this, and it's only available while coronavirus is going around the world right now. It works like this. If you sign up for the course, you've got to pay in full and sign up. If you finish the course within 30 days. Now, finishing the course basically means going through about four hours of training material, submitting a before profile and an after profile to me um, to show that you've put in the work and, and, and answering a couple of quizzes. If you do that all within 30 days, it's not a huge amount of work, but if you do it in 30 days, you can get your full money back. All you got to do is basically at the end, I'll send you a form saying, hey, hope you like the course. Uh, would you like a full refund or would you like a partial refund and leave us some money behind? It's entirely up to you. We're doing it because we know a lot of guys are struggling financially right now. We're struggling financially, but we want to make it possible for guys to keep getting an education. So I'm trying to put it out there that you can do this course for free or you can just leave a little bit behind to help us. You can do that right now by clicking the link. I'll throw up the top here and down in the comments below. In this course, by the way, it's not just video material. I've also got an incredible Facebook group. If you join that group, I'm there every single morning and my coaches and other more advanced students where we can look at your profile, we can look at your conversations with women online, and we'll give you feedback. Now, that, that Facebook group is only available to paid members of the course as well. So yes, you will get hands-on support through this. It isn't just an online program. There's a whole community to back you up every step along the way. So as I said, go ahead and check that out. It won't be available too much longer. For the rest, guys, I hope what I've said today has resonated with you, because I think it's really easy to feel uh, intimidated and feel like, oh, I, I don't want to have to work so hard on dating. Or are, are women really worth it? But at the end of the day, success in anything is worth it if it's worth it to you. And if you want success in something, you've got to be willing to put in the work. And success in dating, I promise you, is easier to get than success in other parts of your life. So it is actually a really great 
step in the right direction. As always, guys, I hope you've liked this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and check out some of my other videos. If you like this one, I reckon you might just like those as well. Take care, stay safe, and I'll see you in my future videos.